<clears throat> and if what do you, I look? If you thump on the table, you can hear it on the mic. Okay. So, so now, just here, or there, or there, or there. Don't go. All right, man, I, it feels like it's been forever, which we took off last week, but you are here today with us. This is This Pink Cloud, Season 2, Episode 44. I am DJ Kelly Reverb. Sitting across from me, the uh, beautifully quaffed uh, Dylan Kingston, and I would say he is a, a rad skateboard dude. <laughs> And a uh, and a smart recovery facilitator. Yes, yes, correct? in the house. Good to be back. It's been a little while. Yeah, I know. It seems weird. It seems like when uh, I was like, oh, I, I remember what sleeping in is like. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, and then I haven't been on in a couple, uh, even a couple weeks before that, too, so it's, it's, it's good to be back. Ah, yeah. well, good to have you back, buddy. Yeah, exciting, exciting. Stuff. Well, so, um, but uh, with us today is our lovely guest, and I would say... Dirty Dan Nyburn's better half. Yes, and indeed. Val, <laughs> Val the gal. <laughs> Valerie Nybrand. Yes. So thank you for coming on today. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. Yeah. So I hear you're a podcast regular. So you do this. Oh, all, no, you're no. like on the podcast uh, uh, circuit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All that stuff. I did one a couple of weeks back, but it was not related to recovery. So I'm ah. really excited. Okay. Well, cool. Well, before we get into it, you know, we're going to talk about the 12 steps today because I don't think I, I've ever really had an episode that was dedicated towards the 12 steps and kind of demystify the 12 steps and, and tell everybody, you know, what they're about. Because honestly, if you, if you hear the 12 steps, you're like, Oh, that sounds like some secret handshake (laughs) kind of mumbo jumbo. (laughs) Hey, but before we get to the good stuff, obviously I want to hit our sponsor, which is summersky.us. So summersky.us, 888-857-8857. Once again, that is 888-857. 8857, and they are a lovely facility out in Stephenville, Texas, if you didn't know. I didn't. But they are in Stephenville, Texas, and it is a place where I got clean and sober. Perfect. (laughs) Those those go hand (laughs) in hand, right? But I got clean and sober. And, uh, man, honestly, I I tell this all every time. If I can do it, you can do it for sure. So, and even if if you, if you, um, you know, just if you're curious or whatever you want to just give them a call. Uh, they're really cool. Uh, good people out there. And, uh, Dylan, (laughs) Dylan gets penalized for making key noise. (laughs) That's going to be $5. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Put it on my, put it on my tab. But so, so we've got some exciting stuff coming up for the show too. We're actually going to be moving locations. Yeah. Um, so we, uh, we're doing two more shows here. So we'll be here till the 17th and then we are moving downtown, dude. We are moving downtown Dallas. Moving on up. Exactly. To the yeah, exactly. No, yeah. To the downtown. Right? <laughs> yeah, Not right. east side. <laughs> but it's kind of, it's kind of cool cuz it's actually above the Majestic Theater. And so oh, it like sweet. overlooks like I, we can actually see the bands checking in. So yeah. whoever whoever's in there, we can sneak in backstage. Yeah, yeah. that's smart. Yeah, we'll that's have a, very we'll strategic. Ha- we'll, right? have a, we'll have a view. It'll be like our our penthouse view. It is. It yeah. is. It, it's super very, nice. Very so I'm player. excited about that. Um, but anyway, so what we're here for. Ooh. Is to talk to this young lady right here. I know that you. We were kind of talking, and I know you, that you've probably sponsored close to a hundred people yes. around there. <laughs> um, but like, let's hear a little bit about like your your backstory, what you want to share, obviously, and then you know what you're doing now, and and just tell okay. the folks out there a little bit about yourself and why you are so interesting. Oh my. <laughs> okay, we won't go to all those stories. <laughs> Um, however, um, so I do want to qualify myself as I, you know, talking about the 12 steps, I think that's huge and important for especially newcomers. If you're tuning in today, um, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, the book talks about, you know, that's the most important part of 
recovery is. And by the way, this is the book right here. There you go. In case you want to get a shot of that. There we go. Yeah. That is the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. That is um, our Bible. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's funny you said that because I also brought this. I don't know if you've ever seen this. I haven't. Uh-uh. But this. Yeah, I was wondering what that this, was as well. This book is what started it all. So this is the unabridged version of this. So this is them. Oh, my. The, all the people sitting there, it's got, like, people, like, scratching stuff out. And my friend Nolan, who used to be on the show, um, he would say, oh, yeah, Kelly, <laughs> Kelly's got to have the Dead Sea Scroll. The Bible's not good enough for him. Yeah. So there it's you kinda, go. It's kind of like the Dead Sea Scrolls. I kind of need kinda, that, too. Yeah, Thank it's kind of cool just to <laughs> see, to because they really thought it out, and they'd go, oh, no, we'll, we'll get flamed for that. So <laughs> it's like, so it's <laughs> like, change it. So it's, like, unedited. It's yeah, like exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you'll yeah. see their notes. Yeah, that's it's cool. cool. Yeah, that that's is really cool. Cool. anyway. All right, so basically, um, yeah, so I am a recovered um, alcoholic. I'm also a recovered drug addict. Okay. Um, so I have been clean and sober since May 13th, 2015. Okay, congratulations. Um, thank you. It's Amazing. been um, all because of the program and mm-hmm. the steps, but I was a late bloomer. Okay. So I say that, but... Basically, I kind of always knew I had the allergy because Mm -hmm. in high school, Mm. you know, you start drinking with your friends and I'm just not done yet. You know, right? (laughs) everybody else is tapped out and you're like, no, not me. (laughs) Where is that next wine cooler? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And for me, I felt so I'll just throw it out there. I was very Mm. awkward and very um insecure about like what you or anybody would think of me okay so that when I took that drink you know it just really uh, it just released that it made you it made you vow the party gal that's right Right. and everybody liked me and and that was what was important so it was that you know that feeling um and the book talks about that but ultimately I was able to Drink, and like the book says, um, you know, there's a certain point of where you pass that line, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah, where it goes from, like, just doing social it drinking, up yes. And yes. Things like that to where it's, like, and now a, you can't go back a from necessity. It. Yeah. yeah, so at this point in my teens, I was really able to, to go back and say, hey, you know what, I'm not doing that. I ended up um, progressing in my life and not having an issue with alcohol. Mm. However, I... Um, after I'd gotten a divorce and was a mom and all that stuff, um, basically I started drinking again, like with happy hours and stuff like that. Yeah, like, little, yeah. Mo- little mommy culture, little, yeah. Lo- little, yeah, 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 yeah that club. kind of thing. I but gotcha. Here I was, you know, showing up to happy hour at two o'clock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody's and, like doing and, it at two and, o'clock. And you pre-gamed for it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I got um, a tailgate for the mommy party. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And and you know, and I'm drinking later, and so I already noticed that allergy just kicking right back in. I didn't know what to call it at mm. that point, but sure. um, eventually that led into you know benzos and vitamins and uppers, you name it. You know. Right. So I like, s- I like to call those the drinkers' companions. Oh, yeah. they yes. were. Yeah, <laughs> they keep you keep you going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so um, at this point, you know, later in life, I think I was about 27. Okay. No, when I started drinking again, I think I was 23, but around 27, ultimately, I had just lost control. Yeah. I um, couldn't control the drug use. I couldn't control the alcohol use. Um Basically, you know, I had stayed in that state for approximately four and a half years. Right. So, um, and it, and this was nothing you signed up for intentionally, because I, I want to point that out. Also, nobody really signs up to be an alcoholic or, or a, an addict. Or yeah. an addict. <laughs> they don't set out to do it. They set out to navigate it uh, no. properly, you know, or or yeah. socially. Well, yeah, and that's what. People were doing that were my age. Right, of course. No, <laughs> and no, people no, are no, still no. doing yeah. it at my age. And sure. It, it makes it even harder, too. At this point, you, like you said, you were already like in a, you had a family, and, a, yes. and I'm sure you had a job and all oh, of those yeah. things. And so you were uh, uh, juggling multiple, you know, like you're taking care of your family, you're working a job, and then you're also hiding your addiction from people and all of those things. And That's right. Yeah, it, it 
becomes a scary, sketchy slope. It was sketchy. Well, I thought I was hiding it, but apparently, you know, everybody <laughs> yeah. else Don't knew we about all? it. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, nobody knows. And sure enough, you know, everybody's like, well, we knew you were not right, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, um, you know, I, I did hit the bottom for mm. me. You know, that was definitely losing everything. I mean, from custody to job position to um status to you know ending up at the 24-hour club wow. which is why i love the 24-hour well club. so i mean j- and just for those people that don't know what the 24-hour club is go ahead and give them a little idea we actually yeah. have marcia from the 24-hour coming up coming on the 17th of yes. this month she'll be on she'll be the last show in the studio Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so that'll She's be a, a good last I'm glad. Yeah, no, I'm excited to have her yeah. and talk all about it. But let's talk a little bit about it now. What is the 24-Hour Club? Um, so the 24-Hour Club, when I had met the 24-Hour Club, it was um, it's still the same place mm-hmm. in terms of, like, it houses people that are sober, that want to remain sober, uh, men and women, mm-hmm. and you have to, you know, it. they keep you accountable to your sobriety. So right. you have to have a sponsor, you have to do the chores list, you have a curfew. And is it just for homeless people? Not necessarily. Okay. Um, people that come out of rehab mm-hmm. that don't have a safe space to go mm. to, like if all your friends are basically using or drinking and you don't like have good support or maybe your mom or dad's tired of you then you go to the 24 hour club right <laughs> right no 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 I I like almost it. classify it's almost like a it's almost like a sober living type environment right like, it is yeah. yeah it's definitely sober living not yeah not as much as like a it's not just like your everyday run of the mill like homeless shelter no. right yeah. as, as the walls fall oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. right i mean well yeah no. so i did enter the um original 24 hour club the old one with mm-hmm. the red brick building right and, and that's on ross have, avenue yes. it's just still there it is now they have yeah. a new facility right it is beautiful um and so either way same system we had meetings and for me i'll just back up a minute because throughout that time of um of being out there and mm-hmm. not being and not drawing a sober breath okay right mm-hmm. um I like how I you put that. I didn't know people could be sober. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Right. I'm right. sorry. No, 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 no. I just hey. thought the AA was where people came to smoke cigarettes. <laughs> and I really and thought be, it. And be miserable. Yeah. And be miserable and talk about alcohol. <laughs> right. And they were kind of cultish. Uh-huh. And yeah. yeah. And okay. Oh, yeah. That's a, very important that you point that out. There's yeah, a, whole, a whole culty vibe about the uh, reco- the rooms of recovery that uh, that a lot of people. And. I personally never thought that, but now, now that I've been in and, you know, and like I've seen both sides of it and I speak to other people that aren't addicts or what they, they it seems very like culty to them. It yeah. definitely does. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, I did hit a couple of AA meetings while I was out there. Um, but I didn't get it. Like I didn't understand the steps. I didn't sure. understand the prayer. I didn't understand why everybody's drinking coffee. Like I didn't understand everything. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand why a guy with overalls was talking to a girl. You know, I don't know. It just seemed weird how people were mixing uh-huh. and it wasn't natural to me. Okay. Because but on this side of it, I understand that sure. we mix because we're, you know, we're all the same. Yeah. You yeah. know, but it was different. So, um, what the, what, you know, when I did try to finally, ultimately, you know, I was done, dude. Like, I couldn't, I was like sick and tired of using or drinking against my will. Oh, yeah. I yeah. was no longer using or drinking because I wanted to. Now I was doing it because I had to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that- I mean, I'm just getting the shakes. I was having seizures. I had blood pressure issues. I mean, you name it. With Health-wise, I uh-huh. was a mess. Yeah, I mean, and I, I always share this in my story. Um, you know, I was full-blown diabetic. I, 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 you know, I mean, I guess I have that gene in my family, but I gave myself onset of diabetes yeah. like i'm talking insulin shot level oh my God. yeah uh doing doing two shots uh, insulin shots a day and of course a bunch of shots of fireball and vodka and whatever <laughs> <Of course. else. laughs> yeah. but but doing that but doing shots that and, and and yeah it, but just that that hopelessness of not being able to quit because i mean i just signed up to have fun 
Yeah. And and to get dr- and to get drunk and to just have fun with it and then all of a sudden it became a job oh, yeah. and a career totally. and 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 a lifestyle, you know. Lifestyle, so, yeah. yeah. For sure. I um so I bring that up because you know, I later found out that that was my step one and we'll get into that, but ultimately um with the with you know, going to rehab and going into the 24-hour club, ultimately what that allowed me to do is see that people were able to be sober and clean. And the biggest thing to me is to be happy about it. Uh, Ah, <laughs> so yeah, I love that. And I always say that. I'm like, if you're not, if, if you're sober and you're not happy, uh, you know, because I mean, I'm just happy. Yeah. I can get up and function. I'm like, Oh my God, dude! Yeah. I'm not having a level ten panic attack that I need to, you know, take a benzo oh, yeah. a- and chase with, uh, you know, a, a one of these of vodka. <laughs> and I'm glad these are filled with actual water now. So right, yeah. right, yeah, it exactly. Took me, yeah. It took me eight months to get over the fact that I could wake up at like six a.m. and like go a full day and like then it, like lay down at night and like just go straight to sleep without like getting high. Or it took me like it, a long time to be does. like, that's yeah. okay. Like it's yeah. cool. Sure, yeah. it really does. Um, so yeah, no, that was an, uh, you know, sitting in rehab, obviously that was an eye opener cause we had groups that came through. I went to Homeward Bound. Okay. State funded. Yeah. Shout out to Shout Homeward out Bound. To them. Yeah. Love that program. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, you know, DAA or other groups would come through and they would say, oh yeah, well, I haven't drank and I haven't used and I'm good with it. And they had this big peace and happiness about them. And it just, I would go up to them and be like, okay, wait a minute. No, first of all, you're lying because I don't believe that you can go to like a Mexican restaurant and have a margarita. I can't believe that you can have a bad day and not have a benzo, Mm -hmm. you know, like how do you function this way, you know? And so ultimately at the 24 hour club, we were able, you know, I was able to have the accountability Mm -hmm. to have a sponsor and that right there freaked me out because now I'm like going to the cult. Right. right? Oh, yeah. Like they're sure. telling me the only way I can live here and have long term sobriety is to go be a part of this cult. Right. Which in my brain, my sick brain, you know, which is not the case at all. Um, and so uh, it's funny because I'm going to talk about a friend of mine who passed away. Um, her name is um, Jenny. Mm. And she, um, Jennifer Schmiedel, she mm, passed away. Okay. She was staying with me there. And she was so excited about sobriety. Mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, my God. You know, I would get on, people get on my nerves. Yeah, yeah. it's just like, get over it, girl. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, oh, yeah, Val, you, we, we got to go to this meeting. We got to get you a sponsor. I'm so mm-hmm. excited. And sure. I'm like, oh, my God, what have I signed up for? So we end up walking into this group. And, of course, I asked somebody to be my sponsor. And she said, I don't know. I, I think uh, we're going to sit down and talk about this because right. I guess I was a hot mess. I didn't realize that. But right. <laughs> <Aren't we all? laughs> But basically, um, I, you know, sat down with her and she says, are you willing to do whatever it takes mm-hmm. to overcome drinking and using for good and all? Mm-hmm. And I didn't know what the heck that question really meant, but I said, yeah, I guess, you know. I guess, yes, I'll do it, you know. Mm-hmm. And so she's okay. I well, get, I guess. Well, I like the, your I like your commitment. It's scary <laughs> too. You know, you're asking a complete stranger and then you're gonna like and you don't know this yet, but you're gonna divulge all your deep, dark, scary mess onto these people and they're sure. gonna help you navigate. And like that's a that's a big thing. It's a it's very, a huge thing. And yeah. it's funny because I asked the same girls you know, the girls I sponsor the same thing and usually they have that, you know same look of like are you serious right now and they're like yes you know um but ultimately that um is what drove me to to work the steps Mm -hmm. um is because i had to i didn't want to be there guys like i didn't want to live there i didn't want to work the steps i knew i wanted to be sober i didn't know what sobriety looked like or that it was obtainable I didn't know it was obtainable and ultimately that's the biggest message i want to talk about today Mm -hmm. and like overview wise it's like, you don't even have to want, I mean, you really don't have to, like, have a good mood about this. Okay, yeah. The steps work. Right. Regardless you, if you have a good mood about it or not. Right. So, if you you're can, miserable doing the steps, they're going to work just as good as if you're happy doing them. Right. Okay, I like that. Yeah, so, um, and I think sometimes. Because a, a lot of people definitely begrudgingly work the steps. Of course yeah. we oh, did. Yeah. yeah. 
We oh, didn't yeah. want to do the work. Right. <laughs> I mean, nobody just signs up to do all that work. Right. So um, that's, you know, definitely, you know, my background in coming to know the steps, obviously where I am today, and, and then we'll talk about some of the steps, mm-hmm. is, um, you know, six and a half years clean and sober. Um, I have a wonderful, amazing husband, Daniel mm. Nybrand. He is my partner, uh, my confidant. Dirty Dan. Um, Dirty Dan, my friend. Uh, oh, and let's give Knucklehead Recovery Knucklehead a plug. Knucklehead Recovery. Knucklehead Recovery a plug real quick. They're a group on Facebook, and they post funny recovery stuff. Yes, and he has apparel coming out soon. So he um, he's just an amazing human. Um, also, I ha- we have um, several kids. We have Dakota. We have Mariah. We have Bel- uh, Brianna. And we have our baby, Isabella. And yeah. most of, you know, br- the older kids are, you know, adults, but um, basically. Well, now you got built-in babysitters. Now so built-in that's, babysitters. <laughs> that's good. But, you know, I get to have a career today. Yeah. I get to go to events. I don't have to drink. Right. I don't even think of it. Oh, yeah. I get to, you know, do everything that I was wanting to do before, but now I have a spiritual completion that mm-hmm. I was always searching for through drugs and alcohol yeah. right that I found and has been had a longevity would you say it helped fill a void basically oh, yes yeah yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. total I had several voids in my life so right that you know and I never thought that was possible sure um and so we have an amazing beautiful family I mean the relationships the friendships the get-togethers i mean the vacations and the i I like the functionality i mean getting here today i was on time yeah you beat us both here yeah right yeah so anyways um yeah so that's what recovery does and Mm -hmm. i'm really excited to dive into some of these steps Um, sure do you want me to do do you want me to lead it because i kind of wanted it to you you know demystify it because like i said you know it's like some secret society and there's some secret handshake and there's really not Mm -hmm. i mean to me i think it uh the as far as the 12 steps are concerned it's a fantastic blueprint um for uh spiritual growth and then i will say also dealing with trauma and then also there the you know the last whatever three steps are are basically upkeep mm-hmm. on on those first uh nine i guess yeah right would you say that's a fair assessment or am I, I, yeah you're yeah? right you're okay. right it's total uh spiritual and, and you mind right. handing me that really yeah quick? sure because i want to kind of but i can you get it yeah, yeah. but i but i love it because like people always this was written back in 1939, remember? Yeah. <laughs> but it was, and it's cool, and it sticks up today, and a, a lot of people, actually a lot of groups, um, you know, have spun off of AA yeah. and used the 12 steps. I mean, there's CA, uh, there's NA. Uh, NA. Well, no, I think NA actually has yeah, their NA own book, own. but it's loosely based well, on Well, yeah, that. they have their own book, but yeah, it's just it's stories of people that have drug drug addictions instead of you know what i'm saying and things like that right yeah good point yeah yeah daa i mean there's so many you know a's that we could talk about for sure um i don't care i mean well you now you opened up to a page so i'm curious did you open up to the 12 steps i did i opened up to the 12 steps you don't have them memorized or tattooed on you anywhere (laughs) i'm a human (laughs) that forgets and i I do have some pages uh, memorized so so, okay okay, so uh we uh, the first step is we admitted that we were powerless over alcohol and or drugs uh that our lives became unmanageable so i mean that's pretty self-explanatory i mean you know but is it uh, well i mean i don't think it is all right so okay let's hear it like okay okay, so like if i'm a if i'm a sponsor or a potential sponsor coming coming to you what would you say see that's what this step right here actually confused me um because when i read it i was thinking i was powerless um Uh. over things versus right. what this step is really pointing out and that's why I wanted the book is because I want to point out in this first step um even if you're a big book thumper you're gonna love this but on XXVIII oh, yeah. <laughs> the old Roman uh-huh, numeral pages yep. um you know basically what this is saying is what makes me powerless um 
is this allergy mm-hmm. that I have, mm-hmm. you know, and it doesn't talk about that in the first step, but right. because well, a lot you, of a lot of people though, their sticking point, and what I've heard is the whole powerless, you know, mm-hmm. and and I I don't know if if it should be if we're power powerful over alcohol because we're not, no, <laughs> nope. you know, but I mean it's a lot of people have that's kind of a like they don't want to actually admit that that. Right. You know. and, and so that's why I think it's important when you do sit down with your sponsor, you know, that she's mm. able or he's able to break this down because ultimately what it's saying uh, when I talk about, so this is really step one, we admitted we were powerless over drugs or alcohol hyphen. That's its own section. So it's basically saying whenever I put drugs or alcohol in my body, that. Um, I have an allergic reaction to that, mm-hmm. and, you know, it causes me, in my allergic reaction, nothing that you can see by the eye, but it causes me to have a loss of control. Mm-hmm. And because I have that loss of control, I can no longer count my numbers. Mm-hmm. Maybe back in the day, I was able to, you know, count of like, okay, I'm going out for one drink. You know, and there, you know, that was fine. Mm -hmm. But now I'm at a point where I can no longer count my numbers and Mm -hmm. I'm at a loss of control. And I don't stop now Mm -hmm. until something bad happens. Right. Or you you black out. Or you're behind bars. Or you are. Yeah, Yeah, it's just, it's a a complete, I mean, you have no, it's not, you're, like you said earlier, we're using against our will. As soon as that drug, alcohol, whatever the case may be, enters my body, I go into pinhole mode and it's anything and everything I can get into my body until something stops me. Right. And it's yes. not gonna and it's not gonna be myself. It's usually red and blue lights. Or, or <laughs> red and blue. Unfortunately, unfortunately for a lot of us it's death. Yeah. Or you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like sure. and that's, that's and that's the true reality of it right. all is because when we say we're addicts or alcoholics, like she said, that allergy is so powerful that like if it's not arrested then it's going to manifest itself into a way to kill you. No. Yeah. Exactly. Hands down. Right. Yeah. Hands down. Hands down 100%. And so that is what I you know and I always like to point that out to newcomers because powerless when the book is referring to it here they're referring to the allergy that I have. I cannot like if I'm allergic to strawberries and you had strawberries here today right? and I'm like, you know what, today I'm going to tell my body not to be allergic and <laughs> sure. I start just down in the strawberries. Right. What do you think is going to happen? A little ER trip. Do you there you go. <laughs> do you have an EpiPen? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So the same thing happens with my physical body. Mm-hmm. You know, I can never in my life drink or have substances in it because As much as I want to control it, it's a manifestation that's within me. For some reason, people want to call it the, what is it, the pancreas, whatever. I don't digest it like everybody else, Mm -hmm. and I crave more. Right, and maybe, you know, who knows, maybe our brains process it differently or something. Well, yeah. Um, Or, I mean, but what really, I mean, the whole reason why I think people use is because they want to escape reality and yeah. are are uncomfortable in their own skin exactly you know? so. yeah so that hyphen there actually means something mm-hmm. and what that means is when something bad happens usually i'm in rehab i've got a dui mm-hmm. or, you know my family kicked me out whatever um that hyphen means that i stop and i mean it like mm-hmm. i'm done right? right and we've all been there yeah, we've stopped. We meant it. How many times in one day? Right. Sometimes, you know. I n- I never. I've read that step a million times, and I've never really noticed the hyphen. Yeah. Yes, the <laughs> hyphen I, says I, a lot. That, so that's uh, that. The, you should put in parentheses. Stop and think. Here is yeah. this you. That's right. <laughs> right. How many times have we stopped and we meant it? Right. Yeah, meant right. it. Sure. And so, when I do that. Mm-hmm. Now I get to go into the next step. What happens to me when I stop and I mean it, whether I'm getting out of jail, whether I'm sitting on my mom's couch trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to do. You know, in the first couple of weeks of that sobriety, um, you feel pretty good, but then something happens Mm -hmm. and you're kind of triggered and you're like, I don't, you know, this mom of mine keeps telling me to get out of her house to go find a job. She's getting on my nerves. You know, whatever that... But either way, I'm sober, right? Mm -hmm. There's not a drop of anything in me. Right. 
And stone cold sober, and I become restless, irritable, yeah. and discontent. The old red. The yeah. old red. Yeah. And that's what that second part of that step is talking about, that our lives become unmanageable, and mm. that has nothing to do with consequences. And that's what I wanted to point out, because mm-hmm. when I looked at that step, I always thought my life was unmanageable because of the consequences. And there are people in this program that haven't had very many consequences. Oh, yeah. Right. You know, and they can still have this, you know, allergy and all, of, you know, the obsession. So ultimately what I'm talking about is the obsession, mm-hmm. you know, when I'm there, right, and I'm frustrated. And um, my brain automatically goes to what the book, book says. They are restless, irritable, and discontent unless they can, again, it, experience a sense of ease and comfort which comes at once by taking a few hits or drinks which they ultimately relapse right Mm -hmm. and so um basically my mind is trying to kill me Mm -hmm. and make it look like an accident like you had said earlier yeah you know and so ultimately that obsession when that happens i no longer know the truth from the false Mm -hmm. Right. The truth is when I put this in my body, I'm allergic and I literally am at a loss of control because it makes me crave more. The false is I can, you know, it'll be better this time. Of course. I can get away with it. If maybe if I mix the vodka with the benzo and a little bit of upper, I'm good. Right. Yeah. You just you got to get your combination right. Well, I I mean, and you guys, I know you guys have been to meetings upon meetings, and you've heard somebody say that like their their addictions out there like doing push ups, waiting on them for them to like fuck up or whatever, right? But my favorite thing that I ever heard somebody say, and I'm probably gonna butcher it, but it's like my addiction isn't out there doing push-ups it's with me all the time and it's enjoying the fact that i'm clean and sober right now so that the second that i falter it can be right there to snatch me up with a noose you know what i'm saying like it enjoys the fact that we're like getting better so that because it's a it's a mental game it is. I mean, of course, there's physical attributes to it and stuff, too, but it's a mental game. It's in your head. You're, a, it you're is. It's a chemical thing. You're addicted to these chemicals and things like that. And so the second that you could be having the greatest time, like you said, you're feeling great, whatever, and then you start getting irritable and restless and just oh yeah 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 like so that my addiction can swoop in and be like hey buddy hey, this would be good like a, a, like a little life on life's terms starts mm. happening oh, to man, you <laughs> and, and then and you have to actually deal with it yeah, yeah. like sober yeah Ooh, that was without tough. your crutch yeah yeah, yeah. And without your without your bestie yeah exactly right. Right. exactly and so that um no, all that is, um, and so ultimately, you know, I can recover, and that's what the steps do is they help me recover from the mental part of this. Like, mm-hmm. I will always physically be addicted. You know, I will always, not not true, I'm sorry I said that wrong, I will always physically have this allergy. Sure. But what I do recover from is the mental part of this. I'm no longer obsessing about it. Now yeah. I can get away from you know, that whole spin every time, like, oh, it'll be different this time. Oh, it'll be different this time. Oh, mm-hmm. it'll be different this time. I mean, how many times in one day have we all tried to stop? Right. <laughs> and well, I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you, do you still have thoughts of like of, of that? Because, I mean, I honestly, you know, I'm at about, whatever, 16 months, okay. something like that. Um, but I still think, hmm, just there, there's still that in the back of my head. Just oh, like, yeah. Dude, you know, maybe maybe a two years, dude, beer me, you know, or, or something like that. I mean, this yeah. is real. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, but I, I mean, the, the, the thing is, is I know I know where I, I wound you up. You know your truth. I know where I wound up and I know that, you know, why tempt fate is kind of my my personal decision. But I mean, I just wonder. I mean, does it yeah, still bother? Does it still bother somebody that has six, seven years of sobriety? Do you still mm-hmm. imagine, it, like, every once in a while, go? I oh. don't. Yeah. But I can tell you honestly, the mm-hmm. first two years were that way. Okay. Yeah. Like, um, oh, maybe I can have a glass of wine. Yeah, Come yeah. On. And then you go back to your truth, though. Right, right, right. You know, and so now I'm not gonna say you're cured because you're not, mm. but. Um, you know, I, I don't think of that, but I think that um, the longer time that you, and I think in smart recovery, you know, with y'all, you're retraining your brain. And yeah. I kind of feel like this is a, a similar in a way mm-hmm. because you're retraining or the spirituality comes in. I don't know, but it's like, you know what? 
I know my truth. Like, I have had to live my truth out so much that I'm like, oh, I remember that instance. Even if it does pop up for one quick second, mm-hmm. I can imagine I would just be like, oh, well, I remember that. I wrecked somebody's car and <laughs> had to pay out that amends. And, boy, that was tough. And yeah, 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 yeah. And well, yeah. so, yeah. And I think that's what all of this is. Like you said, it's like you're reach- we're, like, in our own heads, like, plugging in wires and, you know, and fix it. Like, imagine it that way. Like, you're re carving path because you well they say it they say carve yeah pathways neural path neural you're pathways, re-carving yeah. pathways to learn different uh uh responses and and things well like that. i i've shared this before but i mean i used to keep my vodka in the fridge uh you know in a lovely ozarka bottle thank you okay. ozarka but it was there but now i have my energy drink and i keep it in the same place where my vodka was so i just go over there and just uh, you know appease, appease that neural pathway with uh, with a different uh, beverage of my choice. Yeah, yeah I hear yeah. you. I'm like yeah. addicted to diet coke, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. Right. But um, either way, yeah, no, everybody's different. Um, so once um, I f- my experience has been, and with seeing other people recover too, um, everybody is so different. So ultimately. I just want to run down this because I do want to get where we're talking about that spiritual um, experience. So mm-hmm. came to believe in a power greater than ourselves. Okay, so that's that's a big sticking point for a lot of people. But go ahead. I want you to go. I don't want to interrupt you yet, but I, but I yes, will. Yes, I love But it. I will. I'm glad you will because <laughs> I did not like God okay. at all. Uh, well, I mean, the thing is, is there's a lot of people that don't believe in a higher power. Sure. I, I know them well. Yeah. 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 And I I think I believed, but I was I also believed that um well God what kind of God would want anything to do with me, mm-hmm. right? Because I was such a shitty person. Right. I mean, right. yeah, sure there's a God, but he left me a long time ago, guys. Like mm-hmm. you're trying to get me to God. Guess what? We already did this and he's done with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I was very broken around this. However, what this ultimately um is saying is, you know, my higher power before, we all have a higher power. We're just not calling it what it is, right? Sure. Drugs were our higher power. Mm-hmm. Um, myself, I was my own higher power. I used to do well at that, but that's not working for me anymore. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the alcohol isn't working for me anymore. You know, the other stuff isn't working for me anymore. So now I have to find something that is bigger than me Mm -hmm. because that ain't what I was using before isn't working and it has to be bigger than the alcohol or Uh the drugs or whatever your thing is. And so um, what this ultimately, the way that I can simplify this is saying if you, if step one, what I described, if that's your truth, Mm -hmm. then the, we ultimately have two choices. One is we die this way. Mm hmm. Or we accept spiritual help. And to be honest with you, I was like, well, how can I die? Because the spiritual help seemed impossible, right? Right. Because I wasn't exactly going to church and doing all the right things to get in the position I was. Mm -hmm. So um, basically what I really say to people that struggle with this is, okay, fine. We can't think of a higher power right now that can help you out of this. Well, let's think of the past. Where have you been in your life that you and God only know, Mm -hmm. and maybe there was another person, maybe you were about to get raped, maybe you were in a dangerous situation, maybe you were getting robbed, I don't know, but where, how, you know, did you ever reach up and say, God, if you get me out of this, mm-hmm. I'll do anything, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. I, I think we've all the done fox that. foxhole prayer. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly what I was going to say, dude, the foxhole prayer, of course. Yeah. yeah. And time. the thing about saying that is what what got you out of that? Let's uh-huh. think about it. Did you have a friend there? No. Okay. Were you able to do, like, the show, the game show, uh, call? You know, uh-huh. help or whatever. Phone, phone, phone a, a friend. friend. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're here today. Uh-huh. How did that happen? Let's yeah. think on that. What power got you here today? Sure. Well, let's not call it God yet. Let's okay. just think about it. Very simplistic. What kind of characteristics would that manifest to allow you to be here today? He would look like Alex Trebek. Okay. No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. No, no. no. Yeah. It, maybe he does. Yeah. But the characteristic part is huge because 
when I was in that situation and I said, God, if you get me out of this, I'll do anything. And uh, he did. Yeah. It wasn't the way I liked it. And that's what people don't like. Uh, right? I would, may have been in a situation, maybe a jail or maybe, you know, uh-huh. not at my mom's house, not in a car, <laughs> whatever. But he I'm got gonna, me out of I'm it. I'm going to put you in jail. So, look, you're but out of sometimes it. sometimes God <laughs> working, right? Right. right? But what characteristics were there? What, let me think. They were compassion. Mm-hmm. So whatever that was, it was compassionate. Mm-hmm. It was patient. Mm-hmm. It had a little bit of a sense of humor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. It had to with me. It was very, um, you know, um, loving, friendly, you know, approachable uh there it was timely Mm -hmm. you know and so i say think of the god of your experience think Mm -hmm. of that experience whatever that higher power was okay so i'm going to challenge you here so like what if the person comes to you and says oh well i've tried that and it didn't work you know, or or I just you know somebody that's agnostic. Sure, or like, I love that. Because there's that we agnostics. Uh, yes, whole I love that. Okay. I love when people say that. Okay, so because look. the best thing I say is that's perfect. So, are do you believe what has worked for me can work for you? Right. Ultimately, mm-hmm. that's enough. Yeah. So and, I love that that you said that. Yeah. That's good. And like, and people, I think get scared because also, I mean, for someone like me. I'm not religious or anything like that, but people, when they hear God, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, fuck, I'm going to have to go to church, oh, and I'm going to yeah. have to tide my blessings, and I'm going to have to do this and do, you know, and mm-hmm. all that, and that's not the case. It's 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 just believing that you're not doing this on your own. Right. right? That's like right. There's well, I, but I, there's I, something helping I, you. And I love yourself. that you said, but what you said is like how, you know, <laughs> if it's working for me, if you want what I have, you know, do you I love believe that. it's work? Do you believe what works for me can work for you? And that's I ultimately that. yeah. what. And the reason why I said I love that you asked that because uh-huh. that's where I was. Yeah, I didn't do like, oh, I have a higher power. I can do. I believe that was not me. My face fell right when I heard this God concept or spirituality and all yeah. that. It really did. I was like, mm. well, and I think I think the honestly. Place. That's what turns a lot of people off about the program yeah. as well. So, I'm sure. Yeah. So, you know what? If you believe what worked for me can work for you, we move on with the rest of the work. Right. Okay. Period. See, I like that because then, because I mean, you could sit there and think, oh, yeah, what, we could. What is my higher power? What does my higher power look like? What, somebody, <laughs> what told me, somebody told me, somebody told me one time they said, your higher power could be the flying spaghetti monster. But right. If it keeps you clean and sober, then that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And so, um, By the way, if y'all don't believe in the traditional God, y'all are all going to hell. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> I'm just this kidding. took a left turn. Huh? I'm, no. just yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just no, kidding. No, I'm just kidding. No. Um, and so, yeah. And, and so, basically, ultimately, that's what the steps are designed to do. Mm-hmm. They're designed to create a relationship between you and your power, higher power. Right. I can name all these characteristics about my higher power today, but when I started, I said, well, I'll have to believe what works for you can work for me because I was sitting in front of somebody with seven to eight years of sobriety, and they were happy about that shit. Right. Yeah. right. I'm sorry. No, I'll just no, do no. that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> right. Excuse me. No. But yeah, no, it just I'll take like, what they're having. I'll take what they're having. <laughs> yeah. Having the <laughs> same issue I had, I'll take a slice sure. of that. Yeah. You know? And so, um, all right. So, so then you said, uh, so basically, if that's enough for that, uh, you know, if, if they can get to that point, then you move on to step three. Step three, yeah. Okay. And so... Um, but what do you say? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going yeah, to go back ahead. up right. a little bit. But, but what do you tell someone that's like me? When I came into recovery, I was like, oh, well, I'm worse than all of y'all. I'm hopeless. There's no there's no way that I can stop using. I'm a scum bucket, bottom of the barrel addict. I'll, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because there is that, too. Yeah. What, do, what do you say to somebody like that? Well, basically, um, ultimately, I would suggest, and I know this sounds crazy, but it would be a willingness prayer to not, like, help, you know, help me be willing to see the similarities versus the differences because that, and I would just say, try to see what's similar versus what's different between us. And also, um, you're not that unique. (laughs) It's a fact. Because the reason I bring that up is because a lot of times 
we we do think we're unique we and do. when we come into we the rooms do. it's like a comparing game oh yeah right oh, yeah. it's like oh well you did this well oh well i did this and i did five times more than you and i stole a car and the, you know and it's it's not about that it's right not. it's about the allergy yeah it's uh, about the fact get, that yeah you have a loss of control okay me too yeah that's all that matters it doesn't matter where you take yours as long as when you want to stop you can't stop and yeah. when you try your mind convinces you to go back out and ultimately that's our truth yeah just because mm. I buy mine from a trap house and you buy yours from the gas station, we're the same. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That's it's. Yeah. It's I agree. I agree. Yeah. I oh. love the questions. Yeah. Good stuff. Go you ahead. Carry go on. Okay. Carry on. I'm yeah. on a roll today. Um, yeah. So, uh, well, you said you want to break well, up the mystic. So I'm just trying to do that for well, us. Well, no, no. And I love it because hopefully this is uh, bringing a light and it, it's not, you know, it demystifies. So maybe somebody that's not comfortable with having a higher power can still work the steps, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think oh, I yes. think that's a huge thing. Oh, so, yeah. It's huge, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, making a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God <laughs> as we understood him, which is so hilarious to me. Right. That is a huge step that that's is very, intimidating. That, hold on, that, but that is very 1939 right very there. Very much so. <laughs> yeah. God, God as we understood him him yeah <laughs> so i love that just yeah. so y'all know By i still way. don't understand god yeah and in fact okay yeah I'll, yeah <laughs> i'll give you a little goodie from dirty dan who i we were friends before we were together and uh-huh. one day i said you know when am i ever going to understand god he goes sometimes it's better to know god than to understand god and i thought if i keep trying to understand him i'll never know him Right. And that was a little nugget I still keep with me. <laughs> he yoded you. He did. I was like, <laughs> it was pretty cool. But uh, basically, ultimately, this is intimidating. But all that it means is I'm making a decision to go on with the rest of the work. Right. That's it. Okay. I get to do a really cool prayer in this step. Mm-hmm. And um, it's ultimately, you know, basically saying, hey, God, I'm going to keep my hands off my life. I've seen what... I right. can do, and whoever's running Corporation Valerie needs to be fired. <laughs> right. And I'm going to go ahead and let her be fired. Complete and overhaul. Complete right. overhaul, uh-huh. bankrupt, all of that. Right. And um, ultimately, I am going to be your employee, mm-hmm. and I'm going to be, um, you're my boss. So mm-hmm. in the mornings, I'm going to check in with you, see right. what I can be do- doing today, how I can be helpful to others. And I love that you said that because, I mean, I, I found really key and it's not like i'm some old grizzled veteran but early on in sobriety i found because in um like the rehab that i actually went to is morning meditation Mm -hmm. and morning like or an evening meditation so it was it was they called it the daily process where i went and and you basically kind of had a list and and you know you said i wish i had that with me but i mean i found that that the meditation part of it was very important and very key, especially early on. And I'm not saying it's not now, but especially early on for me, it was. Oh, yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, Wake up with a clean slate and just yes, like, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Well, and just get your head right for the day and know that, you know, and just do that step one all over again. But you most know? importantly, yeah. if I am saying I have a new employer, what do I do every day? With my employer or my job, I check in, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm saying I have a new employer, then I'm going to check in with boss man. Mm -hmm. I mean, and he's a mob boss, just so you know. "Mm, He's awesome. You like, and so ultimately I'm checking in just to say, hey, how can I be of service today? You know, Mm -hmm. but ultimately that's step three. And then um, four is make it a searching and fearless moral inventory. So basically I'm sitting down with my sponsor. Mm -hmm. I am, she's giving me an inventory i um, doing um, resentments, I'm doing um, fears, I'm doing sex conduct. It doesn't mean everybody that I slept with. It's basically how have I used my woman powers mm-hmm. to um, manipulate, mm-hmm. you know? Sure. It doesn't mean that I had to sleep with somebody to use my woman powers. Dylan, right? how, I I, I, Dylan, how hold on. D- Dylan, how have you used your woman powers? Well, yes. I do have uh, a <laughs> fair faucet uh, <laughs> fluff under here, so sometimes I flip it in the wind. All right. <laughs> 
Very good, but I'm sure you have. I mean, in your manpower, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, we, we learn how to we learn how to manipulate whether of it course. be with sexuality or charisma or whatever. That's like I could right. talk my way into a good situation 99 percent of the time, right? right? That's right, and that's what the that's what that's ultimately doing because I need to get all of that out of the way, and it's ultimately what I have done over the years of self will is I have created this tunnel that has all these boulders in it, right? Mm. And the boulders need to be removed so that I can have this obsession removed for once and all. Mm -hmm. And so that tunnel is going to be holding things like, you know, Well, and I, 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 this is kind of like where you deal a part where you admit and deal kind of with some of your trauma, right? That's right. I mean, that's okay. Yeah, trauma, um, you know, resentments typically are covering the trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, fears, I mean, I had a fears list of three, I think, three to four pages because mm -hmm. I was very fearful. Well, I'm fearful being alone. Wait a minute. I'm fearful being with somebody. Oh, I'm fearful to have friends. Wait, I'm fearful to not have friends. Mm -hmm. You know, we yeah. can go on and on with that one. Mm. And I love when I can do a good fears list with somebody because I know that they're being honest because in early sobriety, there's so much fear. Mm. You know, the wind blows. Oh my God, that scared me. You know, right? Yeah. It, it's just so scary. Yeah. So the fears list is highly important. Okay. Um, then obviously I'm sitting with my sponsor. I am doing, um, the inventory. Um, she's, you know, I'm sitting with my sponsor. She's inviting God, you know, higher power to come in and, and be a part of this because basically we're hashing this out. Mm -hmm. You know, she's telling me, yes, I, you know, I was resentful, but is that fair for me to re be resentful mm -hmm. over something I've also done to somebody else? Right. You know, that's more mm -hmm. selfish, right? Sure. Um, so I find out my character defects in mm -hmm. this process too, like ego, selfishness. Um, my big one, I'm delusional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dishonesty. <laughs> right. Um, all of those things come out in that process, and it has to be, you know, with somebody that is like us because yeah. we couldn't, do it on our own we just right when there's no way like that's why people don't you know and, and the book talks about that you know doing it by yourself is not self-sufficient is not efficient enough um and so basically then you do a six step which is basically a prayer six the sixth step is basically a prayer mm -hmm. and it's basically hey, well i want to go back to step five real quick okay. so when you say admitted to god and ourselves i mean so people a lot of people have a stick up on like basically telling kind of a stranger uh you know maybe their sexual inventory or something mm -hmm. like that and uh, what would you i mean what what advice would you give somebody who um <laughs> maybe doesn't want to be 100% truthful with their yeah. fifth step. Yeah. What would you say? So I don't even say anything. So I love this book because it says it here for me. Okay. It says on page 73, mm -hmm. after it says why it's so important we discuss ourselves fully with somebody, it says we must entirely... We must be entirely honest with somebody if we are we expect to live long or happy in this world. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, um, you know, that ultimately I'll point that out as well as um, the fact that whenever we do this, we go over taking this, you know, after we're done with our fifth step, carefully reading over the five proposals we mm -hmm. ask if we have omitted anything for we are building an arc through which we can walk a free man at last and mm -hmm. so at that point i just say you know have you been honest about everything do you get, do you do this like you have your reading glasses on and you drop them and you go really <laughs> is that it is right. that it is yeah that it? well the fu is it's funny you it? say that because the yeah. first time i ever did a fourth step and then a fifth step uh -huh. um I was like really nervous about it. And my sponsor at the time, I was like, dude, look like a lot of shit. You're going to hear me say a lot of shit. That's like really super off the wall. Uh -huh. And then we got done. And that's what he fucking said to me. He looked over me. He goes, that's it, dude. That's he's it. Like, he's like, that's a weekend for me. And I'm like, <laughs> fuck you, dude. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I also share some stuff from my four step to uh -huh. kind of loosen up the mood. Yeah. And yeah. I think that helps. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good thing, um, you know, as a sponsor to do. Yeah, sure. it is. So yeah. Make, I give yourself, them... make yourself relatable. Give them a little nugget. And oh, just go, I do. Hey. They're like, oh, I'm <laughs> oh, good I give, now. <laughs> I give them a big nugget. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow, dude. Now I can talk about my stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no. I've yeah. got plenty in there. So, Funny. yeah. Hey. Hey, well, I, I don't know if we're going to be able to get to it all. Uh, I, well, I know we, we're going to have to have you back. 
I know. Yeah. We're going to have to do So, I mean, you know, we'll four. we'll talk uh, cuz I would love to have you on with Marsha. I think yes. that would be a great to have somebody that actually has 24-hour experience yes. um and that lived it and then, you know. She might like tell you how she did not think I was going to Oh, <laughs> well, I would I would love that. I would love she that for sure. Always tells me that. No, I mean, I'm just kidding, but she no. really does. She's yeah. in a loving way. She's like, "God, Val, I can't believe you made I it." I cannot <laughs> believe you of all people. Yeah. Wow, yeah. you. <laughs> I've had hey, but real I've quick, I want to hit our sponsor, which is summersky.us. That is summersky.us and that is 888-857 8857. Once again, that is 888-857-8857. They are a fantastic facility out in Stephenville, Texas. I got sober there. You can do it too. So that's what I have to say <laughs> as I point at the camera. Yeah. But, um, you know, so uh, the thing is, is also, you know, I mean, I think that's cool and, and we've touched on a lot of stuff, but also so I want to touch on, and I always kind of preach about this if you will but having fun in sobriety i mean because the people like i mean honestly yeah. i thought i was going to lose Such my a- edge and not be able to have fun um not without cool with, without alcohol i was just like how do people have fun without alcohol yeah and i, I mean that was a bit uh, that That's was huge. a big yeah. thing for me because i was gonna lose my edge man and i was like Man, I'm just as big of a smart ass as I ever was, yeah. and, uh, and I'm the still truth. the I'm still the same person, and I still you know, but I mean I have fun, and I'm actually here to enjoy it. So I I don't know what would you say? I mean, just we have a few minutes, so what would you say to um, that? that point? I definitely was there with you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely awkward in the beginning when you mm-hmm. don't have substances to like even like go out and do things as a group of friends and sobriety. It's just, you're going to feel awkward. You're going to feel out of your element. Mm -hmm. Um, Continue to practice whatever, you know, the sober outings, there's so much to do. Be a part of those things. Mm -hmm. Um, There's just so much to do in this, in this um, DFW, but go and be a part and you're going to feel a fish out of water. But guess what? You're not the only one that feels that way. Oh yeah. There's everybody's there and you can even make a joke and be like, Hey, I'm socially awkward without alcohol. You're going to see that today. Let's (laughs) have fun, you know, And, and just let it be known because that is, it's just learning how to to walk again, you know, oh, yeah. and use your your functionality. What do you think? Yeah, yeah I mean, I agree as well. Um, I, th- I mean, and uh, it'll scare. I don't know. In early recovery, I was like scared of do going out and doing stuff with uh-huh. people. Like oh, I yeah. wouldn't. I would, but I think I, I I think that once I got past that, I I think I have more fun now when I'm out with people and stuff like that because I'm present. Oh and yeah, I'm like. And I'm like snappier and I'm like there and I'm like more and like, like, like you said, you, you're, we're making, I'm making memories now. I don't remember half the shit I did when I was high and fucked Mm -hmm. up and stuff like that. And like, now I can go somewhere like me and my fiance can go to the museum and like two weeks later I can be sitting somewhere and be like, Oh dude, that was so, you know, I can remember those things and like vividly remember them, you know? And And I'll also... There's no guilt involved. Yeah, <laughs> no right. Guilt. Well, stealing, and I don't wake grand. up the next morning wondering, yeah. like, God, did I make an asshole out of All myself? Right. Like stuff like that, yeah. you know? Like, sure. So I, I don't know. It's, it's definitely like you said. It's stepping out of your comfort zone. It's all of those things. But man, in the end, is it worth it? Right. Yeah. I remember sure. the first time I went out with a group of people uh, that were sober, and we were, we were broke. We had money. Uh-huh. You know, we're all together. We're all shopping or window shopping, and basically. Um, I was like, this is so awkward. But by the end of the day, I was actually laughing mm-hmm. about stupid stuff that we were looking at in the store. And right. I just, like, forgot how awkward and that I didn't have alcohol mm-hmm. or any substances. And I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I just d- laughed. Well, wait a minute. I just <laughs> I was, had fun. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, remember, I remember in the beginning someone told me, uh, you know, because I was one of those ones I would show up late and leave early. Uh-huh. And they said, you need to flip that. You need to show up early and leave late. Right. right. And just force yourself to do it a couple of times. And then you start meeting people and talking to people and stuff like that. Before you know it, you're going out to dinner with everybody. You're doing this. You're doing that. There's events on you're the weekend. Doing, you're doing a podcast. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. And, you have, and you've made friends, right? Sure. And there's no, 
the coolest thing about friends in recovery is like because when I was an addict, at least in my case, I wanted to be friends with you for whatever I could get out of your pockets, uh -huh. right? Or yeah. whatever you could do for me. Yeah. And that's not the case anymore. I can genuinely just be friends with someone because I fucking like them. Right. Right. That's awesome. Right. So right. Cool. right. And also, really quick, we're all weird and awkward without alcohol. So guess what? You know what? Yeah, we're absolutely. feeling all the same way, and yeah. we get to be around each other and hang out with each other and accept each other the way we are. Embrace the weirdness. I Embrace like it. I weird. like it. Right. Exactly. Um, so real quick, I guess uh, you know, I always like to give uh, the guest an opportunity to give shout outs because I know you have probably a little bit of a list. But and also, I would like yeah. to invite you back on the show. I would well, love so. to come okay. back. All right. Know. We will. We will see if the calendar allows it okay okay but any shouts out Goofball. shout out shout out shout, <laughs> shout out shout out shout out is it shout go oh. first? Go first. shout oh, outs I, or shouts out shouts out <laughs> i don't know yeah, yeah, totally right. butchered that i don't know confusion yeah. um uh no i just always say hi to shelly you know she's at home watching so uh -huh. hi Yay. babe um, okay and then, hi yeah. shelly I am going to say hi to, uh, well, I want to shout out um, Knucklehead Recovery. Mm -hmm. uh, they are on Facebook, and they are um, a great group. I know that uh, Daniel Nybrand, my husband's doing great things with them, as well um, as my fam. Okay. Love you, fam. And, all right. Um, that's all I have for Well, cool. Out. Well, thanks for coming out, and hopefully we demystified a little bit today. Yeah. Hopefully. hopefully we put some light on it and and maybe somebody, you know, can use this as a tool and maybe yeah. we help navigate today. Yeah, I think I we, don't know. and I think we talked about the scariest part. So next time we need to just now we'll talk about the, you know, the maintenance at the end half there of it. You, you know what I'm saying? And maybe right. that'll so then we'll and then we can join both the podcast together and there we go. <laughs> Whoa. Mind blown. Yeah. <laughs> Explosion. Uh but anyway, uh please uh, uh we're uh we have a YouTube channel, so if if you get a chance please subscribe to that and that is just uh if you go to www.thispinkcloud.com that will route you to the youtube channel so be sure and subscribe there we're also on all formats like uh, spotify all that good stuff um next week we actually have doctor we have a doctor on i know who, who who knew but uh Do dr charles smith and uh he wrote a book called understanding addiction and uh all about uh the stigma uh that lies within mm. so that's going to be a good one so at least you guys tune in I and will. We'll, i'll have at least two people watching yeah. and, that's not and, true. and brett unwillingly watching <laughs> oh, Brett, lo Brett loves it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Brett, if you could play us out. Um, hey, guys, if you want uh, shirts, be sure and go to my website. Uh, it's djkellyreverb.com forward slash shop. Uh, got a bunch of groovy shirts up there. And thanks again for coming out, guys. Appreciate it. No and then remember, kids, there is no magic pill for sobriety because if there was, we would all take too many.